Hi everyone and welcome to Mostly Math. Today we will be investigating the claim written above that the product of a sum of two squares is itself a sum of two squares in two different ways. If we write this in mathematical symbols, it says if we have four integers a, b, c, and d, if I square a and b, add them, square c and d, add them itself should be the product of two other integers squared and added. They have to be two distinct sets of integers. So the u's and v's are not equal here. And this example comes to us from fantastic book An Imaginary Tale by Paul Nahin. Book looks like this. Fantastic book. It tells you many elementary properties of complex numbers. Definitely check it out. And we're going to start off with a few simple examples in terms of numbers before we go through the straightforward proof. But the gist of what we're going to do today is that this seems like a pretty hard theorem to prove using only real methods and it's actually far easier and faster to use complex methods to do it. Let's begin. Okay. So examples of this that you could easily find include the following, which you can feel free to verify. We have that 2 squared plus 3 squared times 4 squared plus 5 squared equals 533, which is equal to 7 squared plus 22 squared. And there's also a second way you can do this, 23 squared plus 2 squared. So any of the number theorists in our group can feel free to verify this. Far too many numbers for me. This is one of the smallest examples. There are other larger examples as well, which you can also verify. Second example given in the book is that 17 squared plus 19 squared times 13 squared plus 15 squared is equal to 2,500, no, <laughs> 256,100, which we can also write as 64 squared plus 502 squared. Wow, there's just so many numbers, right? Way more numbers than I'm used to. You can also write as 8 squared plus 506 squared. You can, of course, feel free to verify these. Just a lot of numbers, though. There's a lot of patterns that you can discover just by plugging numbers into your calculator and so forth. I'm not sure if these, if this is the way how these were originally were discovered. But let's say that we suspected that this pattern holds for any A, B, C, and D. So any number that we put here should be expressible as a sum of two squares. So how are we gonna go about finding that? Let's say, as the book indicates to us that we, we're gonna begin with the following example, 89 squared plus 101 squared, multiply it by 111 squared plus 133 squared. This is a huge number if we multiply this out. This is 543,841,220. And we want to express this as some u1 squared plus v1 squared and uh, a u2 squared plus v2 squared. We're assuming that we found the other two simply by brute force calculation. And we wanted to generalize it to these random numbers because we think it should hold true for any numbers. The question is how do we find u1, v1, u2, and v2? Well, there are apparently ways to do this using Diophantine equations, which we're not going to cover here. I find them to be quite boring actually, but we are going to show this using a complex method. So yeah, that is the setup. Let's get started with the proof. All right. Product of a sum of squares is itself a sum of squares. This only holds for two squares, of course. It may hold for more, but we're not gonna cover that in this video. Maybe you can find out if it, if it holds for more squares. I really don't know personally. I don't know if it holds for more squares. Okay. But definitely check out this book, Imaginary Tale. It's, it's fantastic. It has great examples like this. Shows you the utility of complex numbers without even using calculus, where, where they're really important. Okay. So, 
we're going to start with the left hand side of our expression. We had a squared plus b squared times c squared plus d squared. That's what we had before. Now, I'll give you a hint that we're going to use complex numbers for this. So, one thing you might think right off the bat is this looks like a magnitude of a complex number. And since you know the formula that absolute value of some complex number squared, yeah, if we write it in terms of a plus bi, is simply a squared plus b squared. So we can see right off the bat that if we want to, we can recognize these two products as simply the magnitude of a complex number. So let's go ahead and do that for both of these here. So um, we're gonna use the following form. It's going to be equal to z star z or a minus ib, a plus ib. You can see this since we have a squared here, we have iab and minus iab, which cancel out, and we have minus i squared times b, which, which is uh, one, of course. So which is a squared plus b squared. Yep. So now we're gonna write this as a minus ib, a plus ib. Now we're gonna have c minus id c plus id. Okay, now you see immediately that we have more structure to work with than we did before. All right, so first thing that we're going to do is multiply them in the following way. We're gonna group these two, get, these two together and multiply them. So if we do that, we have ac. The other real term is gonna be the last term. So it's minus one squared i squared bd, which is obviously minus bd. Gotta keep track of these signs here. AC minus BD. And we have an I term here. What is the I term? AC, we have minus IAD. We also have minus IBC. So we're gonna actually write it in this form. We have minus I times the sum of these. AD plus BC, fantastic. And now what we're going to do is multiply. Yeah, I'm gonna keep that there for reference. We're running out of room though. Multiply the other two together. So we did the first two. Now we're gonna do the last two. Multiply these bad boys together. All right, so if we do that, we have AC and the other real term is I squared BD. So it's minus, minus BD. Sounds good. And the imaginary term. Um, so we have plus IAD plus IBC. So it's plus i, what we had before. Now looking at this, we notice something quite remarkable. It's actually not remarkable for a reason I'll explain later, but something that appears remarkable. So we have the same real component, but the imaginary component is the same, but separated by a minus i. So it's conjugate. So this is a, a form of you know, z star z by itself, which we can now right as a squared plus b squared, but these are not the normal a's and b's. These are this being a and this being b. So we can immediately write this down without actually uh, multiplying out all the terms. This is simply ac minus bd squared plus ad plus bc squared. So actually we have the first solution. We have the first u1 and v1 here. Now I wanna take this time and note that if I gave this to you in an exam or something and I just wanted you to show that it was true, you could easily foil both of these terms and show 
that it is indeed equal to the product that we have up there. But that's not very illuminating. You wouldn't actually learn anything by doing that. And in fact, that's not how this relation was described originally. I mean, how would you come up with this? How would you come up with this originally? Okay, so let's find the second one. I told you there were two solutions. I only found one. All right, so how are we gonna do this? Well, it's pretty straightforward. So last time we multiplied this one and this one, but we don't have to do that. We can go the other way. So we did the first and the last terms of the product um, if we use the FOIL method terms, but we don't have to do that. We can multiply the outer and the inner terms. So let's go get and get our second solution by doing that. We are now multiplying these terms together. Note, we did not do that before. We multiplied the outer and the, the, uh, the first and the last. Now we're going to multiply the outer and the inner terms together. All right. Lot of kind of tedious multiplication here, but because of the ZZ star simplification, there's only one step of tedium, so it's worth it. Okay. This is also equal to we have AC. Last term is minus I squared BD. So that becomes plus. And the imaginary term is AC. IAD minus BC. And we want to use the same format that we had over there. So it can be plus I, AD minus BC. I'm choosing the convention of putting the, the A's and the D's first. All right, this is our first term. And for the second term, we're gonna multiply the inner terms. We did the outer term. Now we're gonna do the inner terms. All right, these brackets look terrible, I do apologize. All right, so this one is AC. The real term is minus I squared BD, which is plus BD. Great, we see that it's the same for the real term. And we would really hope that it's minus I times that here. So let's see if it is the imaginary term minus IAD plus IBC, which is exactly what we want. So minus IAD minus BC. Now we can use the same observation as before and immediately write this as a Z star Z style number. So it's sum A squared plus B squared. Which we can do now very easily to obtain our second solution. It's just AC plus BD squared plus AD minus BC squared. Yeah, so as you note, it's just what we had up above, but with the plus and the minus line interchanged, which makes kind of intuitive sense. So now I have completed the proof. I've told you that there are two ways you can do this. And I haven't really showed that there are only two ways. I don't actually know how to do that. If you do, please leave a comment. But there are at least two ways. There could be more. But why have I done this? What is the good of doing this if we don't actually use it for something? Well, let's go ahead and as the book indicates, let's use it to find the solution for our original problem. So if we plugged in A, B, C, and D, to this expression, we could indeed find the following, that 89 squared plus 101 squared times 111 squared plus 133 squared is actually equal to 300, sorry, 3,554 squared plus 23,000 and 48 squared, 
which is also equal to 626 squared plus 23,312 squared. If you want to, you can certainly square this all out, but I'm just going to trust Mr. Nahin on this. So yeah, that's how you can use this to um, find the U1 and the, the U1 and 2, the V1 and 2, if you're given A, B, C, D squared in this, in this kind of way. But the, the real question that I had while working through the proof is why does this combination magically have a Z star Z style where everything just works out nicely? Well, it's actually a consequence of two simple rules. If we have two complex numbers, Z and W, and take the magnitude of them, it's the same as magnitude of Z times magnitude of W. And also the magnitude of the conjugate is the same thing as the magnitude of the complex number itself. I want to go through the proof that we did here in a more general method to illustrate this. So, we're going to do that as follows. We're going to look at what we had here, immediately recognize it as a modulus squared. So, left-hand side of our expression here is just z star z, w star w. I'm just calling, you know, z a plus bi and w to be c plus di. Pretty obvious notation. And what we did basically with all of this multiplying terms and so forth was to just do what we did here. So we multiply these two, say, becomes Z star W star, which I'm gonna write as ZW star times ZW, which is of course just the modulus of ZW squared. And there's a second way to do it. We can also, instead of doing the first and the last, we can do the outer and the in. It's also equal to Z star W times ZW star, or I can write this in the following format, which is just the magnitude of Z star W squared. And then instead of going through all the complex multiplication with the coefficients and so forth, I can just immediately multiply Z and W together, multiply Z star and W together, and obtain the final results that way. So if you want, you can go through this version of the proof yourself and see that it's the same. If you enjoyed this, want to see more about complex numbers and math in general, please subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.